Branches of willow, hazel and other common garden plants can be used in the construction of a wattle fence. This video shows you how to make a beautiful and long-lasting fence. Like a hedge or a wall, a wattle fence can be used to delimit the garden or to divide it into different parts. Woven fences can also be used around borders to camouflage compost bins or to create a basket for storing leaves in autumn. Not every branch is suited for weaving. The most suitable have a long well-developed main branch, are supple and have few side branches. Thicker as well as very fine branches can be used for making fences. It is best to use branches with a similar diameter. In many cases it is possible to find usable material in your own garden or that of friends or family. Farmers or Association for Nature Conservation will often be only too pleased to receive assistance in the pruning of their willow trees. If you enjoy weaving you can of course plant the appropriate plants in your own garden. The pollard willow, often Salix alba, was traditionally used for the production of firewood tools and for weaving. When pruned regularly, these trees can be used in many gardens and provide good material for fences. When larger trees are pollarded for wood, some smaller branches are often suited for weaving. Other willow species like the basket willow produce very good weaving material. Hazel, Corylus avalana, is a beautiful shrub for the ornamental garden. Traditionally, the shrub was cut back every six or seven years to ground level to harvest so-called hazel rods. You can also prune out the branches that are thick enough for use and leave the younger ones to grow. Without pruning, a hazel shrub will develop into a small tree with very little weaving material. Dogwood produces finer branches that are also very suitable. Apart from the indigenous Cornus sanguineum, many dogwoods are used in the ornamental garden for their colored stems. If you cut them back partially or entirely every year, you can harvest the colored branches. Bamboo can be found in many gardens and can be used for weaving fences as well. Some bamboos are mildly irritating for the skin. Wearing long sleeves and gloves is a good idea. A wattle fence is made by weaving branches between a series of stakes. This can be wooden stakes like this one in chestnut. Stakes must be sufficiently straight and resistant to wood rot. You can also use other stakes like this pressure treated pine stake. In some projects, iron bars for concrete reinforcement can be used, like this one. Or for final work, this type of bar. You can even weave around this type of plastic pole. The type of stakes or bars you use must be adapted to the project. For a more rustical wattle fence, you can use wooden stakes with a diameter of 8 cm. For a lower delicate fence, you will use finer stakes. Be sure to drive your stakes deep enough into the ground. To make a fence of 1,20 m, you will use stakes of 1,80 m. When making a low fence of 30 cm, you will drive your stakes 50 cm into the ground. You will be using the following tools. A hammer. The type of hammer will depend on the project you work on. For smaller stakes you will rather use such a hammer. For driving in bigger stakes you will need a big wooden hammer or a metal sledgehammer. For placing bigger stakes you will also need a ground drill. A ground drill or auger is a practical tool for making holes. Use a drill with a diameter that is similar or slightly narrower than your stakes. 
Using this method will enable you to drive them in firmly. Ground drills can be bought, but are often also for rent at two rental companies. A little trick is to mark the desired depth on the drill with some tape. This will enable you to easily drill holes that are just deep enough. You will also need a folding meter or a tape measure, a string to create straight lines, and of course pruning shears and loppers. In this video I will show you how to construct a simple wattle fence using wooden stakes. The principles and techniques can be used in similar projects with other branches and other stakes or bars. To start out you mark the location of the front row with a string. Then mark the place for the outer stakes and every intermediate stake. In this project the fence will measure 3 meters 60 with the stake every 45 centimeters. There is no formula to calculate the ideal spacing between stakes. The easiest way to find out is to perform a test. If your branches fall between the stakes too easily you can reduce the spacing. If it is almost impossible to weave without breaking them, you can slightly increase the spacing. Once the place for every stake has been marked, you can drill the holes using a ground drill. Using a ground drill is simple. After turning the tool several times, you take it out and tap off the soil. Repeat this action until you have reached the desired depth. Start by placing two stakes, one at each end. Drive them in, but not entirely. The stakes should still be a few centimeters higher than the desired height. For this fence that is 1 meter 5 centimeters. Attach a string to the upper end of the stakes. This will allow you to drive in every stake to the desired height. Place the intermediate stakes in the holes. Align them and drive them in. Don't forget to drive in the stakes at the end a few centimeters deeper. For higher fences it is possible to prevent contact between the branches and the soil to avoid rotting. To achieve this simply place bricks between the stakes before weaving. Before weaving it is important to prune off side branches. For a smooth result place the cutting blade of your pruning shears against the branch. Now we can start weaving. Always start out holding the thicker end of the branch and let it stick out at the ends. This makes cutting it off later easy. Weave the branch between the stakes. If you are making a long fence, the length of your branches will not be sufficient to go from one end to the other. When you have reached the thin end of the branch, you stop weaving. If your fence has a more visible front side, 
you will stop weaving and prolong at the rear side of the fence. This way you won't see any cuts at the front. Prolonging a branch is easy. Just imagine the new branch is following the exact same trajectory as the previous one. Make sure you have sufficient stakes at the ends to be able to firmly weave a branch. Four stakes will do. When reaching the end, let your branch stick out sufficiently so that you are able to easily cut it off in a straight line. Now we push down the branches. We have now woven one line, the second one will be woven in the exact same direction, but starting out at the other side of the first stake. Cut off the branches that stick out at the rear, but leave the ones sticking out at the ends for now. After completing these two lines in one direction, you now start at the end stake and weave in the other direction. Start out on the side of the stake opposite to where your second line ended. Prolonging is done in the same way. Your branch is constantly crossing the previous line. After this third line, a fourth is woven, starting out at the side of the stake opposite to where the third line started. After this series of four lines, you simply repeat the same pattern, adding four lines each time. This technique produces a very regular weaving pattern. Cut off the branches at both ends in a straight line. You can use a straight pole to make a neat cut. The fact that the branches stick out makes cutting them off easier. Screw the lower branches to the stakes and remove the bricks. A well-constructed wattle fence will last at least 7 or 8 years. Often it is necessary after several years to replace the upper branches.